One of the YouTube channels that I subscribe to is that run by Keith Appleton. It's February 2019 and Keith has just started to serialise the refurbishment of a small tangy engine. And that prompted, reminded me that back in 2007 I actually machined up a double tangy engine from a set of castings to a design by Edgar T. Westbury. This is a very workshop stained copy of the drawing from which I machined the castings. Back in the 1920s, Percival Marshall Limited published a whole series of uh, small publications on model engineering topics. The one entitled Lathe Accessories is actually written by Edgar T. Westbury. The book on model steamer fittings is by E.W. Hobbs and I've got one or two of his uh, publications. What's interesting about this particular uh, copy however, this little one, is that it's actually signed Edgar T. Westbury. Now we, even I'm not as old as to be born in 1920, but I've always kind of hoped that that is the signature of the great man himself, but clearly I've got no way to prove or disprove it one way or the other. In 2007 when I made this engine, as far as I know there was no YouTube, or if there was I didn't know about it, and I had fairly limited uh, camera equipment. What follows is just a couple of, uh, a bit of cine film and a couple of still shots that I took at the time I was actually making the, the mill engine. This is just for in the crosshead guides, or one of them, for the uh, double tang iron mill engine. Boring bar set up between centres on the lathe. This is the setup for fly cutting uh, the end flange on one of the trunk guides for the double tangy. This is the setup for machining the recess in the end of one of the trunk guides of the double tangy. Probably a slightly unconventional way of marking up the um, casting for the centre line of the uh, trunk guide while it's still set up for boring. Taking a final cut across the base of one of the trunk guides of the double tangy. This is the setup for facing one of the two cylinders of the double tangy engine. This is the setup for boring one of the two cylinders of the double tangy engine. Running on my really tiny compressor, about 20 psi. Clearly, at this speed, there's nothing for the governors to do. Because the engine is almost all cast iron, including the piston, it actually has a reasonable amount of weight. Um, according to my, gar my bathroom scales, it weighs about 16 pounds in total.
it's actually quite cold today, maybe 5 degrees C. Uh, I have put a little bit of uh, oil in the motion and um, as a result of the temperature the oil is quite thick which I don't think is doing wonders for the, uh, the speed at which the engine is rotated. Pressure's now dropped. In that pressure's dropped to about 15 psi. The compressor can't quite keep up with the cylinders. One of the features of the engine is that the um, the big end lubrication. There is a hole drilled through the end of the crank. Uh, to meet a hole in the end of the uh, of the crank disc, which has been blanked off, and the idea is that the oil goes into the big end and is thrown up by centrifugal force to actually lubricate the big end of the conrod, which is. Um, Quite a neat idea really, and not difficult to do I have to say. The governor mechanisms do work, or the engine would have to be rotating a lot faster uh, for them to actually operate, uh, but they do work, and they do limit the amount of steam into the steam chest. They don't completely cut the steam off because there is a um, there is a bypass port within the governor bodies so that if the, even if the governor is fully closed uh, steam can still get into the steam chests and hence the cylinders. They're only intended to limit the maximum rotation. They're not cut off valves in other words. Amazed that it still continues to rotate. I mean, pressure's now dropped on the compressor to about 13 or 14 psi, so I guess there can't be a lot wrong with it. Friction wise, anyway. To the best of my knowledge, and I'm certainly not an expert, Tangy did not actually produce and prototype an engine, a twin cylinder engine of this type. I think they did do a, uh, a twin cylinder cross compound, but this is just a normal simple expansion. As far as I know, they never did make one, so this would be a flight of fancy, I guess, by uh, Mr. Westbury. The engine's never been run on steam, um, and never will be. And the reason is that it's uh, cast iron cylinders, cast iron pistons and um, I cannot be troubled at the prospect of trying to keep uh, rusting at bay. I mean this is probably the first time this thing has turned over in 17 years, I can't remember. Um, and obviously if you steam it you're bound to get a bit of condensate and whatnot left in the cylinders and you'd have to be jolly sure you've cleaned it all out and got everything fully oiled up to avoid rusting. Um, so I won't be doing that. Probably can't hear it over this wretched compressor, but it makes a very pleasant sort of chuffing sound through the exhausts. Just realised I've been running it with the uh, cylinder drain cocks actually open. So I'm even more surprised it turned over. I've turned the compressor off and we're just running on the residual pressure from the motor car tyre which serves as the uh, as the air reservoir for this little internal compressor. So, uh, very good.
the motor car tyre and uh, small compressor lash up that I use for testing uh, these tiny engines. Without the compressor, the motor car tyre can't hold uh, sufficient pressure for more than a minute or two to run the engine. Pressure's already down to 12 psi. 